What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now if you follow us on Instagram, you've probably noticed that we've posted a lot of side mount diving videos here lately. And the reason is we've been doing a ton of side mount diving in a lot of different courses. Well, I was very fortunate here very recently to teach two of our instructors here at the shop the side mount course. And one of those instructors, of course, is my dad. So I took a lot of pride in teaching this course but I thought what I would do in this video is actually commentate through their training. Now typically we don't film students when they're underwater, but if it's a buoyancy class or it's a side mount class, then one of our dive masters or even myself will actually film the students so that they get a better idea of what their trim looks like, what their buoyancy looks like, or in a side mount course like we were doing here, they can get a better idea of how their tanks are trimmed in the water and how they need to adjust their gear. And then we take that footage of course and we show it to them and we say this is what we mean by your tank getting floaty or your feet's too low and it gives the students a better opportunity to actually learn from themselves throughout the course as well well that's what we're going to do in today's video i'm going to actually play through their training now i have edited quite a bit of this out because this is a several day long course and I just simply don't have that much time on YouTube. But I did get certain things on camera that I wanted to point out to the students and I want to point them out to you as well. So if you see it on camera, you'll understand why we film again certain classes and that way the students can learn from it from actually seeing themselves. But with that being said, I'm just going to hit play here and we're just going to kind of watch through it together. This first part is just familiarization. So after we do all the academic training and we spend a couple hours going over equipment and how we adjust their gear, we get them in the water in a confined area. Now we're actually in an open quarry here, but we're in the confined water area of it. And we just let them dive. We don't worry about doing any skills. We're just letting them dive and letting them get used to having those tanks on their side and not necessarily there on their back and give them a little bit better sense of what it's like to be truly balanced underwater. The gentleman you're seeing here, that's actually my dad. He's one of our instructors. And you can see just right off the bat, we've got his gear pretty well fitted to him. We've got the harness adjusted right. We got the tanks in perfect trim. Uh, we do have to work a little bit with hose routing on him. He doesn't use a short hose and a long hose like I do. He's using two 36 inch hoses and he's got a vertical regulator. So we've got to work a little bit on the hose routing there. Um, this gentleman here, this is also one of our instructors. This is instructor OMB here and he's very new to side mount as well. Now he is running a very similar regulator system to what I do, so he's got a short hose on his left cylinder and a long hose on his right. But you'll notice that the bungee that holds the top of the tanks is coming up above his BC there. And that's just because this is just their first dive. We're still in the process of getting familiar with the gear and getting it adjusted. In all honesty, there's only so much that we can do on land. We've got to get in the water and test the gear out to see where we need to make those adjustments. And that's the purpose of the, the familiarization dive, if you will. But as you can see, they're both in very well trimmed. They've got their tanks trimmed out perfectly. Uh, my dad's gear is pretty much spot on. He has right now, I don't think he's wearing any weight with the suit that he's wearing. Uh, there's maybe just half a breath full of air in his BC and he's in perfect trim. His tanks are in perfect trim. Everything's good. We do need to make a couple adjustments with the hoses, but even with their instructor OMB, it was just adjusting the gear. It's really not adjusting them. Now, keep in mind guys, both of these divers are instructors. They're full fledged instructors they teach scuba every you know every week um, to and they teach different courses but this is their first go around at side mount and they've pretty much took to it very quickly there um, they're holding that trim they've got their feet up the way it should be now here in a minute when we get into the skills um, you'll see that they do struggle a little bit as with any new side mount diver they are going to struggle slightly with the skills but you're trying to kind of relearn a system that you're not used to because we're used to having tanks on our back not on our sides but once again this whole first dive is nothing more than just familiarization we get it adjusted on land we get you in the water we let you swim around i think this first dive we never even got below maybe 15 or 20 feet and it's just getting them familiar with it. Once we do get into the skill portion of it, uh, we get them down to about 60 feet, 70 feet, and they're doing skills in those depth ranges as well. Uh, here you can see dad's just kind of juggling a little bit with his tanks. Um, one of the things that we've got to work on with him is because he dives vertical regulators. That means the hose comes up from the bottom versus coming in from the side like a, a traditional reg would. 
is he's using 36 inch hoses and basically what what's happening is it's coming up off the, or it's running down the cylinder from the first stage creating a loop and coming up into his mouth and there's nothing wrong with that it's just whenever you go to rehook up a tank you've got to make sure that hose gets put back in the right position uh, with instructor OMB here he's just struggling a little bit to unclip he's actually using sliding d-rings and i think we've got the d-ring slid just a little bit too far for him uh, here at the beginning on this first dive um, so it's just adjustments and once again that's what the first dive in your side mount course is all going to be about whether it's a confined water dive or an open water dive it's about getting familiar with the equipment and making sure everything's good to go before you go out hit depths with it try to do penetrations and all that but here we've got the hoses a little bit better uh, trimmed out for him the tanks once again perfect trim for him uh, he's checking his pressures he's making sure that he can see it now with my dad's we actually put his pressure gauges coming straight up so that he wouldn't have to really reach around to get them on my my personal gear and of course uh, instructor Owenby's gear what we did there is they're routed down so they're on uh, little six inch hoses they're routed down you just pull it forward to look at but we're getting them in the habit of constantly checking their air pressure just like you would in a single tank or a back mounted double situation but now you're just having to check two of them so they're just getting a little bit more familiar here you can see dad he's doing a quick little uh, reg swap here which in the training portion of what you're going to see in this video you'll see i kind of work through it and i know a lot of people say well instructors don't train the way they should you know they should have to take classes guys ours do we have seven full-time instructors here and we all take myself included even as an instructor trainer i take a new class every single year this year instructor owen and my dad they decided that they wanted to do side mount that was the class they wanted to take so that's what we're doing and we learn the same way we do that you guys did in the open water you're going to have an instructor that's looking at you he's going to say watch me he's going to run through the skill set he's going to teach you the value behind that skill set and then you're going to mimic what you saw and you're going to try to master that skill but here dad's just juggling again once again with his bottles um, and here you'll see how he has a little bit of difficulty with his hoses when he goes to reclip his tanks on his hip you'll see that hose come out and that's the purpose again of these videos we can actually show these to our students and say this is what we mean by the hose was on the outside of the cylinder versus on the inside of the cylinder so as you can see he's struggling a little bit now the bc that he's wearing is an older model bc for side mount it's got really thick bungees and it is kind of difficult to wing those tanks around and get them put back into position because it's really really thick bungees i think what we're going to do on his is actually swap them out for a lot thinner um, maybe a four or six millimeter bungees i think these are eight millimeter bungees on it and it's really really thick so but once he gets the tank hooked back up you'll see that um you, you'll see where he struggles with that hose on the outside there here's a great representation too of how floaty an aluminum cylinder can get and you got to remember this is at the beginning of the dive these tanks are basically full so that tank's floating floating pretty much even being full but see as he goes to reclip it he'll pull the cylinder up and as he pulls his bungee around notice the hose is on the outside of the cylinder versus on the inside of the cylinder and as i was trying to explain that to him and i said hey you need to make sure that we tuck that hose back down the end so that you don't have any type of entanglement hazard now he can actually see it by watching the video himself there he's got it reclipped it's back in perfect trim he's pretty much in perfect trim uh, but now he's got that loop of the hose and once again guys that's what the videos is for it's for us to learn by now one of the things he could have done here his left bottle is actually on a necklace all he would have really had to have done without having to undo the cylinder is just pop it out of the necklace run it between um, run the hose between the cylinder and him hook it back to the necklace and he'd been fine uh, another option all he had to have done of course is he could have just took off his bungee pulled the tank forward slid the hose behind it re-bungeed the cylinder and then that would have fixed the problem too but we're just letting them practice during this familiarization part and then we will get into here shortly we'll get into actually the skills that uh, that they're going to go over i think one of the first skills we do of course is the regulator swap so you know we want to verify which cylinder we're breathing off of we want to check our gauges to see if it's time to switch and then of course we'll you know make our switch and then verify which cylinder and, and check all that which we'll see and i'll kind of walk you through 
what they're doing here. But we should be fixing the switch over into the skill part. So we just made dive one, it's familiarization. Now we're gonna get into actually learning the skills. So you'll see me, this is me here. And I'm telling them just like I would an open water student, hey, watch me first, let's do the skill. Um, basically what I'm saying, we're doing a reg switch here. I want to verify, so when I grab that hose, it's got the one with the bolt snap, I know that's my right cylinder. Then I'm gonna check my pressure. So I look to see, yep, it's time to change. I'm going to go ahead and switch regs. I'm gonna secure the one that I was breathing off of. Since I switched bottles, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. I'm gonna check the pressure there. And then of course, I'm gonna signal that all is okay. And then we're gonna let them do it, just like we would in a normal class. So here, instructor OMB, he's gonna do his first one. So he's verifying which reg he's breathing off of, which is his right cylinder. He's saying it's time to switch. He's gonna go ahead and switch. And then of course he is gonna check the pressure to the one he just switched over to as well. He did great. No problems, he didn't get his hoses entangled. Now we're gonna switch over and we're gonna watch my dad do it. All right, so he's going to verify which one he's breathing off of and he's gonna check the pressure of that. And here's a good example, you can see how his pressure gauges are, um, are pointing up. Makes it a little easier for him to check. He's gonna go ahead and switch regs. He's gonna go ahead and secure the one that he was breathing off of. Then he's gonna check the pressure of the cylinder he just switched to. And he's gonna signal okay. And now we're gonna teach him how to switch back, obviously. So I'm just saying, watch me, we're gonna switch back, verifying which one I'm breathing off of, check the pressure, verify that it is time to switch. Telling them I'm gonna switch. Then we're gonna switch back over to my right cylinder here. All right, telling them okay. I've switched over to the right cylinder, still got plenty of gas and we're gonna actually let them switch back as well. Now, I did record every skill that these guys learned, but like I said, that video would be forever and a day because this is a several day long course to get your side mount certification. And so we're only just gonna show you a couple here just to show you what your side mount course may be like depending on uh, who your instructor is. So here he's switching back and verifying his pressure, saying that he is okay. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with Dad. We're gonna let him switch across. So he always checks the pressure of which one he's breathing off of, verifies that it's time to switch. And of course, he's gonna switch back over to his right cylinder here. I mean, he's gonna check the pressure on it as well. And like I said, the familiarization part, your confined water training, it doesn't matter what class you're taking, that's the purpose of it, is to get used to it. Now we're gonna go into one of their open water dives. And we're actually just gonna be swimming around. I think on this one, we get to a depth of about 45, maybe 50 feet. There, me, That's me there in the front. You can see I'm just leading the guys. There's instructor Owen be coming in. And we, the place we're actually diving at is in Tennessee. This is a place called Gray Quarry. It's a beautiful little small quarry. It's only about 65 foot deep, uh, max depth, and it's aerated. So that means all that cold water is coming up from the surface and all the warm water is dropping back down and it mixes. So it's a constant temperature. There's really no thermocline in this quarry, which is phenomenal. But there's a lot to see. There's school buses, uh, fire trucks. Here we're diving on an airplane. You can see Dad's going across the airplane now. We're, we're probably in the 40 to 45 foot range here. You can still see we've got to do a little bit of uh, gear manipulation with Instructor OMB's BC there. It's kind of bubbled up in the back. We need to get it pulled on around for him. We've still got his bungees where we need to adjust them. We've got them where they need to be, but we're gonna have to do something to adjust out the backside so we don't have those bungees flopping up on him there. 
And we're just going to swim around a little bit and give them a little bit more uh, time using this new style of gear for them. They, these guys are experienced instructors. They're very seasoned divers. Uh, but it is new to them, and it doesn't really matter how good you are in the water, we all have to practice these skills, especially if you're trying out new equipment for the first time. But as you can see, tanks are in really good trim. He's just checked them there. And one of the things that I do personally in side mounts, since I do dive aluminum uh, cylinders, I have two sets of D-rings. I have D-rings that are pretty much lined up with the seam in my suit, and then I've got D-rings that come all the way around about to the buckle or where the crotch strap of my harness is. And I like to use the double set of O-rings to adjust the trim of the cylinder. I know a lot of divers will like the sliding D-rings, and there's nothing really wrong with the sliding D-rings. I just prefer the double. But in this situation here, both of them are using something different. And so by them verifying where those cylinders are, they can either slide the D-rings rings forward or in my dad's case he can unclip and clip to the front d-rings uh, whichever system you decide to use just practice with it uh, you can be very proficient with both um, here you can see instructor OMB is actually practicing one of his skills he's still probably around the 40 foot mark and he's just practicing a gas switch so he can see what it looks like from the time when he's training in the confined water to what it looks like now and you can see he's holding a lot better uh, trim than what he did in the confined water but getting back to the cylinder trim as well, with aluminums, most people know that they're going to be very, very floaty as you start to use up air. I can actually feel the cylinders on the side of my legs when they're in good trim. And then as they start to get a little floaty, I notice when I frog kick, I no longer feel that cylinder on my leg. And that's a good indication to me of when I need to pull, unclip from that D-ring and bring it on up. Another cool thing that does is that actually lets me know what my pressure is without even having to check my gauge because it, you know primarily because I know where the cylinders are going to be at, at whatever pressure so here's one of the fire trucks we're just swimming around and like I said the whole purpose of this is just so that they can get more familiar with the gear they can practice the skills that we did and we ended up doing three dives with them outside of their confined water so we did a confined water dive we went and made a dive we did another confined water dive we went and made a dive we did a third confined water dive and went and made a dive in each confined water dive we do a, a particular skill set and then sometime throughout that dive they actually go out and they practice those skills but here we're on the airplane and we should be fixing to head over to the houseboat, which one of the things I really like about teaching side mount in this particular quarry, at the 65 foot mark, there's a houseboat that all the windows are out, all the doors are out. There's plenty of penetration points. So this is an awesome place if you're not just teaching side mount, you're teaching wreck diver, or you're teaching the advanced wreck where you teach penetration. This is an awesome place to go do it, especially for side mount divers because there's plenty of holes that are large enough that you can go through with your cylinder. There's plenty of holes that you've got to remove one cylinder and kind of wing it forward or gun it through. And then there's actually several holes on this wreck where you've actually got to remove both cylinders in a no mount situation just to get through. So it, it gives you a wide range of training opportunities as an instructor. But we're going to, I think here we're fixing to move over onto the houseboat. And you'll see these guys, they've kind of got it. There you can see we've got his BC readjusted. This is Instructor OMB's, and you can see that, that Scuba Force BC he's got has been pulled down around. It kind of wraps around him now. And that's the purpose of the training. That's the purpose of the videos. When I say, hey, we need to adjust your BC because it's floating up, he can see that. And in between these dives or different days or whatnot, we can get out, we can adjust that gear, we can get it in position. But there's still only so much that we can do on land. We've still got to get in the water to do this, to film them so that they can get better at it. Here you can see his left bottle starting to get just a little bit floaty. So it's about time for him to pull it down. And now here we are on the houseboat. And we're just letting them make some just basic penetrations here. And of course, Instructor OMB, unlike myself, he's pretty skinny. He can fit through these holes very easily. And I think my dad's up next. He should be going through next. We'll see how he does. Oh, 
And here comes my dad. He's trying to evaluate the situation, see if he's going to be too broad or too tall to make it through. He looks for any hazards as he starts to come through. And then once he determines that he can fit, he's going to go ahead and kind of do a pull and glide. We do that in cavern and cave diving. We pull and glide ourselves sometimes versus kicking a lot of times to stir it up. And of course he made it through without any problems whatsoever. Notice how he is keeping his legs up. He's got that proper frog kick going on there. That way he's not stirring it up if there's another diver coming through. Tanks are still in great trim. He's in good trim. He's got his hoses tucked in. And of course here, this is myself. I'm teaching them how to evaluate uh, your width now, not just your height, but your width on whether or not you think you can make it through something. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my right bottle and show you that, uh, how, or show them how to wing a system to get through. Looking, checking for hazards before I go in. And then of course I fit right in. And let's see if Dad can make it through. Dad's going to come up as I come out. I think he actually measures the hole in this one. He did very well. So he measures the hole. He's going to measure himself. He checks for any type of hazards. And just kind of pulls and glides itself through. And he made it through with ease. Now we're going into some skills. Now we're at 65 foot deep. They're doing some skills here. They're doing an out of air drill. Dad signaled he was out of air. Instructor OMB acted immediately. He donated air. And of course they're going to swim over to safety. Now obviously we didn't bring them all the way up with this. We'll have them reset and change. Switch over. But great response. Now, here this is a personal pet peeve of mine. I like my hoses nice and tucked away. And, and somebody would probably say, well, he, his, his regulator's dragging there. Um, it, in all honesty, yeah, it should be clipped off. But to be honest, this is a drill where they are out of air. They're coming up. It doesn't really matter at that point. Donate air. Get them to the surface. Here they've changed roles, instructor O and B signaled out of air. Now, in this situation, based off gear configuration, it may change a little bit. As you noticed, instructor O and B had that seven foot long hose and they were able to swim side by side. Here he may struggle a little bit because dad's only got a 36 inch hose because he uses two vertical regs. But yeah, I think both of them did very well. I think here at the end, what we're doing is we're showing them how well side mount works anytime you have a failure in equipment. Obviously, you got the redundant system built in there. Um, here, we're actually retying a bolt snap. We simulated that something has broke off your gear and you can have to, you need to fix it underwater. So we're actually retying a bolt snap underwater just as a little challenge for them. But yeah, all in all, I think they did absolutely great on their uh, side mount course. Um, I think we're going to give them a little bit more time and try to get maybe 25, 30, maybe even 50 dives under their belt with it before we do the instructor course to, with them. Uh, it, it's based off their comfort level and, of course, based off their skill set. Uh, if they can pass the skills and they can pass this along to someone else, then they'll be instructors very quickly on it. Um, so I kind of want to end on that, especially if you are an instructor and you're starting something new for the first time. Don't immediately just go out and get certified to do something and then try to get your instructors in it. You need to go out and get the experience doing it before you go out and start trying to teach it. Yes, you may be an experienced instructor, you may be a seasoned instructor, but if it's something new that you're not fluent in it, you need to be 
very consistent with it and you need to be very comfortable with it before you try to teach something somebody else but let me know down in the comment section below how do you think those two instructors did on their side mount course how do you think i did teaching it if there's something i could have done better as an instructor to make my students learn better Drop me a comment down below. Definitely let me know as well. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.